Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 11.6.1 .1, Switch Security Configuration. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Version 7 Cisco Network and Academy Curriculum. So in this lab, we have a lot going on. We have kind of two different sides of a network. There's a layer three switch in the middle here. Remember that does switching and routing. And we've got uh, these devices over here connected to our SW1 switch. And we've got these devices over here to the right connected to our SW2 switch. Now the first thing they have us actually do as well is create some redundancy by connecting G02's port on on SW1 and SW2 together. You can use a copper straight through or crossover. Technically, in the older days, you're supposed to use a copper uh, crossover for like devices, so switch to switch, router to router. <clears throat> But you could also use a copper straight through, and today, because the devices are so smart, it'll actually um, change the signal transmission to match. So I'm going to use a copper crossover from G02 to G02. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to configure G01 and G02. So G01 from each switch is going to the layer three switch up there and G02 is the one we just connected. So I'm going to use the range command here. So on SW1 and SW2, I'm going to configure G01 and G02 at the same time. So I'm going to do enable config T and interface range G01 through 2. And that's because, again, I want the same commands on both ports. And we're going to set them both as static trunks. So I'll do switch port mode trunk. Okay. And again, <clears throat> that's putting both in trunking mode. And then it tells me my directions. I, I get that it's giving me that error there. So just remember, interface range, G01 through 2, switch port mode trunk. And now I'm going to disable DTP. So that command is switch port. I'm still on both. Uh, switch port, non-negotiate. All right. Then it says create VLAN 100 and give it the name native. So let me exit out here. I'm going to do VLAN 100 name native with a capital N. I'm going to exit back out. And then it wants me to configure all trunk ports, which were, again, the ones I was just on, interface G01 through 2. And I'm going to configure them as switch port trunk native VLAN 100. And, again, I'm doing this for both at, uh, G01 and G02. And you see there, as soon as I do, it says it unblocked them and consistency is restored. Now, I need to go do this on the other switch as well. So I'll go over to G02 and repeat the same thing. And you see we're getting mismatch errors and everything over here as well. So you see we're getting a lot of mismatch errors on SW2 here. So what I'm going to do first is actually create the VLAN 100. And then I'm going to name it native. Okay, on SW2. And then I'm going to go into interface range G01 through 2. Still working with both of those ports. I'm going to do switch port mode trunk. And then switch port trunk native VLAN 100. And you see it says consistency restored. All right, so I've got all of that completed here. Next, I'm going to secure any unused ports. So I'm going to shut down all unused ports on SW1. Now, ports that are plugged in are G01 and 2. Those are both being used. FA024, FA01, FA02, and FA010. So it'll be uh, kind of a hodgepodge here of ports that we are disabling. So we've got 24 fast Ethernet ports. So we're going to do interface range, FA0, looks like 1 and 2 are being used, so we'll do 3 through 9. 10 is being used, all right, so then we'll do 10 through 23, because 24 is being used. Or sorry, not 10, 11 through 23. So then FA0, 11 through 23, okay? That lets us do them all at one time, and then we're going to just do shutdown. So again, it was interface range FA0 3 through 9, comma FA0 11 through 23. And those are the ones not being used. If you hover your mouse over uh, SW1, or you could hover your mouse over each one of these individual ports, you can see which ones are connected. 
Then it says on SW1, create a VLAN 999 and name it Black Hole. So we will create that. So VLAN 999, name Black Hole. Again, make sure you capitalize the B and the H. And the configured name must match it. Yep. Uh, move all unused ports to the Black Hole VLAN. So any unused ports that we just shut down. So let me go grab that command again. So interface range FA03 through 9, FA011 through 23. And this time I'm going to set these in the black hole VLAN. So um, we'll do switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 999. So that puts all of my unused ports in the black hole VLAN. Now we're going to implement port security on SW1. So it says activate port security on all active switch ports. So again, that was 1, 2, 10, and 24. So interface range FA0, 1 through 2, FA0, 10, FA0, 24. What I'm going to do is copy it. And then over here, I'm going to paste it. So this is for interface FA01 that the computer was plugged into PC1. Now we're going to configure DHCP snooping. We're going to configure the trunk ports uh, as trusted ports. So again, that is G01 and G02 uh, on SW1. We're going to limit the untrusted ports to five DHCP packets per second. And on SW2, we're going to enable DHCP snooping for VLANs 10, 20, and 99. And it notes here the DHCP snooping configuration may not score properly in Packet Tracer. So we're going to enable DHCP snooping with the IP DHCP snooping command. Then we're going to go into interface range G01 through 2 for both of the trunk ports that we configured earlier. And we'll do IP DHCP snooping question mark. And you see here, it wants us to put these as trusted ports. So we'll type in trust. Okay. Then it wants us to limit the untrusted ports to five DHCP packets per second. So that's where we'll do the limit command. And then you see it ask you to do the um, rate and then whatever number it is, which we have five here. Okay. And then I'm going to exit back out. And right here, I'm going to do IP DHCP snooping, and then it wants us to enable it globally and for VLANs 10, 20, and 99. Just typing in IP DHCP snooping does it globally, and then for the VLANs, we type in VLAN and then whatever the actual numbers are, so 10, 20, 99. All right. So again, IP DHCP snooping will turn it on globally. The IP DHCP snooping VLAN 10, 20, 99 will do that for those three VLANs. Um, the IP, we have to go into the, the both ports with interface range G01 through 2 and do IP DHCP snooping trust to make that trusted ports and then to limit how many untrusted ports uh, DHCP packets per second can be sent, then we do IP DHCP snooping limit rate, and they want us to do five. So the last thing we have to do is configure PortFast and BPDU guard. PortFast and BPDU guard are both um, spanning tree uh, features where it allows the port to come on faster or slower. You can kind of control that. So while it's making the blocking decisions. So we're going to enable port fast on all access ports, which remember were interface FA01, 2, 10, and 24 that were connected to the PCs. And you can go verify that by looking at your diagram. So I'm going to do interface range FA01 through 2, FA010, and FA024. And the command starts with spanning tree. And I'll do a question mark there. And you see that you have port fast. All right. And we press enter. All right. So that will actually 
turn port fast on it gives you some warnings about what that actually does and what it means for each port Okay, it will not have an effect if it's in trunking mode, but remember all these were in access mode. Then we're going to enable BB, BPDU guard. So we'll do spanning tree and we do another question mark. You see BPDU guard and I'm going to let it finish that out for me. And then you see it says enable. All right. Then it says configure SW2 so that all access ports will use port fast only uh, by default. So when we look on SW2, we're configuring port fast. We are going to configure port fast only, no BPDU guard, and we're going to do FA0, 1, 2, 10, and 24. So interface range, FA0, 1 through 2, FA0, 10, and FA0, 24. And we're going to do spanning tree port fast but this time we'll use default at the end of it so that it will be the default command all right and you may also have to type it here outside of the interface as well if it ever takes you back that means it wants it there all right and one other command i forgot to type on sw2 was when we went to g01 through 2 so let me do interface range again g01 through 2 i forgot to do the um to disable dtp for it so we want to do switch port non-negotiate. And that's on G01 through 2. We actually did that earlier on SW1, but I think I forgot it on SW2. And on SW1, they actually did want this to still be sticky for interface FA01. So switch port, so port security. All right. MAC address sticky. So even though it wanted us to configure it manually, it also wanted MAC address sticky to be enabled on that port as well, which usually you probably wouldn't do both, but they wanted it that way. And that now puts our lab at 100%.